Okay, here we are again. Welcome everyone. This is a quick view of the pedal board that we use to make the duet sound like a trio. We have a um, octave pedal that goes to the bass amp there on the left and the guitar amp on the right. And when you click it, the low end Alright, I'm just realizing that my voiceover kind of sucked, so I switched over to the uh, Shure SM7B, where previously I was using my little Electro Voice uh, 635A dynamic omnidirectional mic, it's like a 1970s broadcaster's mic, but now with this uh, Shure SM7B, you know, it's kind of the podcaster's mic, and you know, they say Michael Jackson sang through it on Thriller and other people. So, here we are. We're using it, and uh, should make things a little more clear. But what we're watching here right now is Roughneck playing a little bit of music as a duet. And the guitar is going to the guitar amp and the bass amp at the same time using the pedal board to split it up. So, going to the octave pedal, and some of the loops are done with a... DD7 digital delay pedal. Essentially where you just hold down the DD7 and it gets like a seven second loop going and that runs into the octave pedal. So in this diagram it's actually a little backward. But um, so you loop the bass line first, send that to the bass amp, which is through the octave pedal to bring it an octave down to sound like a bass. And then you can go back to a regular guitar pedal setup and send that signal back to the um, guitar amp. So, I mean, as far as a live situation goes, it's not the greatest because the audience would have to watch you build the loop live in person, which I haven't really been the biggest fan of. I think tastefully done, it's pretty cool. Kind of one of the goals we want to do for this half-neck experiment is having a convincing guitar and bass sound with a duet where it's dynamic, where it's not the whole time, it's, you know, a, a wall of just low frequencies and high frequencies, but where it kind of pops in and pops out like a trio actually would. So, coming up with a way to not have to build loops and then be forced to play with those, you know, or chords or things like that, um, overall. I'm not saying I'm against, you know, a song having some of those elements in it, but not an entire set of music. switching to some iPhone audio. Ryan caught that audio right up against the drum set in a pretty cool spot on his iPhone. The audio from earlier was recorded on my iPhone, but it was in the back of the room, so. And this is it currently, actually. This iPhone shot is mounted right up against where we're playing. Basically, these are just a few riffs that we've worked on. Drop the, you know, low end, high end, trying to get that big full sound. 
So the next logical step would be to jump into the studio and kind of craft some of those riffs together. You need a little danger in your life. So in hopes of next time we jam in the barn, playing back the bass line or the guitar line through one of the amps to record. Take a fucking chance once in a while, will you? What are you gonna do, play with your prick for another 30 years? Uh, make it sound like a trio, you know, we could play to a click track, wear headphones, and then jam live against our pre-recorded track. Getting something recorded is kind of always the plan, getting better audio. So it's been fun to experiment. Ryan's picked up a cool MacBook Pro that he got for like 200 bucks. And so now we both kind of are using Logic and sharing ideas with thumb drives and stuff, so. He's able to bring it and we can plug right into it and just kind of go. And then with a the headphone splitter, you know, we can both kind of play along to a pre-recorded track, which, uh, i.e. isn't something we used to want to do, but you know, just to make, just to make it happen, right? You can vary right, on those Mac Pros. Like. Give, give, give me something. Uh, give me something funky. I I don't play funky. You, you know, you can go out and buy a brand new one with the insurance policy and all that stuff for you know thousands of dollars, or you can find one online for a couple hundred bucks. It works great. You know, we can record right onto it, and then I can bring it home to my computer and mess with it a little bit, share files back and forth, email stuff to Chris or Austin. So yeah, there's a lot to be done, and. Um, we're just having fun doing it.